Okay, everybody, this is Mooney Dashcam. We are out here on Super Bowl Sunday in a nine inch snowstorm in New York right now. So if you don't subscribe, go fuck yourself. All right, so today we are in Roslyn. We're gonna be visiting the house of the infamous John Francis, more commonly known as Sonny Francis. So I have a lot of scattered information about him. I'll get into it right after this turn. We gotta be a little careful on the roadside. We don't wanna get too drifty out here in the truck. We're in two wheel drive, so we can have a little fun, you know? Four wheel drive gets boring sometimes. All right, so Sonny Francis has been in the Mafia forever. In 1931, when he was 14, he was the youngest member to be made in the Mafia. Uh, originally, he was part of Joe Perfacci's family. Later on, he became part of the Columbos. He actually became an underboss. But that's much later in his life. In his 89 years of being in the Mafia, from 14 to when he died at 103, he never ratted. He's like the, known as like one of the last old-school Mafia bosses ever. Yes, here. I don't want to get lost. Now we're going to be turning out to Hillside Avenue here in a second. Okay, so just to give a little bit of insight on what kind of guy this was, he was actually thrown out of the wartime army in the 40s for homicidal tendencies. To get thrown out of the army for homicidal tendencies, I don't know what kind of stuff you have to do. Whoa, buddy, you and I don't think you're supposed to be turning from that lane. I'm a little nervous there. And then in 1965, the FBI labeled him as one of the most prominent loan sharks in the greater New York area. Out of all the loan sharking going on, to be given that label, he must have been pretty intense back then. And then in 1966, he actually beat charges accusing him of killing a rival gang member and chaining cement blocks to their feet and throwing them in the bed. Now, beating the accusation doesn't really mean he didn't do it. I don't know enough about that case. I'll keep my mouth shut. We can turn up here. Let's see. Onto Gratan Street. There's a little bit of snow on the sign there. All right, these side roads are not plowed too well. And then in 1970, when he was sentenced to 50 years for a total bullshit uh, bank robbery charge that they kind of just pinned on him just to get him arrested. He didn't really know the guys and whatever, you know, that's his story, but it is commonly known that it's kind of a BS charge. Uh, and he refused to rat, which got him, you know, his full 50 years. He spent 50 years in jail for that. Drifting here. All right, there we go. There we go, baby. Who says you can't drift in F-250? Will be his house in a few short moments here. Yeah, when he was asked later on, uh, years after doing the 50 year bid, uh, he was, it was like, How do you feel after all those years of doing something, doing time for something that you didn't do? He shrugged and said, It evens out. So, this is coming from a guy who was involved know exactly if he was involved because he was in jail at the time but he got indicted on charges um, for the Colombo Wars while he was in jail so I'm assuming beforehand he did, a, he did a little bit of work it's also known that he has killed between 30 and 60 people now we all know that those uh, numbers are always inflated but, he was caught, caught on a wire by his friend, uh, forgive me if I get this name wrong, because I get a lot of names wrong, 
Giatano Fatato. His nickname was Guy. Um, so he's caught on a wire in quote saying, I killed a lot of guys. You're not talking about four, five, six, ten. So he's pretty much saying that he's killed more than ten people. So is 30 really too out of the realm? 60 seems a little high. Uh, but he went through his whole routine of how he would kill people. Uh, he put nail polish on his fingertips to prevent leaving uh, fingerprints. He suggested wearing a hair net to prevent your hair from falling out and leaving DNA. He would dismember the bodies in the kiddie pool, obviously to keep them clean. He would dry the body parts in a microwave. And then he would run the body parts through a commercial grade garbage disposal. Oh, my keys fell out of my pocket. And then he also said in quotes, Today you can't have a body no more. It's better to take half an hour to an hour to get rid of the body than it is to leave the body on the street. I'm assuming that means back in the day when he was coming up, you could just leave a body on the street and it probably wouldn't come back to you because uh, back in that time in New York, it was really rough, really rough to the point where just bodies were just found and no one ever, no one ever followed up on it. So then, after his 50-year bid, I believe he got out in a... I don't know the exact date that he got out, but in 2011, he was sentenced to eight years for extortion. Now, the kicker for this is his son, John Francis Jr., ratted on him on June 9th, 2010. Uh, his father was 93, and it was over an extortion of a Long Island pizzeria and Larry Flint's Hustlers Club, Sonny fell asleep during that trial, getting him the name The Nod Father. He actually almost had his son killed over that, but it didn't, the hit did not go through. So that's in 2011, he gets sentenced to eight years again. Not eight years again, but you know, sentenced again. I mean, he was like a celebrity back in the day. He would hang out at the famous Copacabana in the city, in uh, New York, and he was seen with Dean Martin. Let's see if we can make this turn here. Jump over the snowman, no big deal. He was seen with Dean Martin, the bouncer Rocky Graziano. Uh, Frank Sinatra was seen a couple of times kissing his ring. So that shows you kind of what kind of guy he was, and. There were rumors of a fling with Marilyn Monroe. All right, so we're pulling up on the house now. 47 Shrub Hollow Road. I'll put pictures, because obviously we're in a snowstorm. We're not really gonna see exactly what the house looks like. But it is this one right here with the stone. It's got the yellow look to it. I'll even pull in the driveway for everybody. Because why not? I got a neighbor looking at me here. I'm sure he knows. I'm just pulling up here to, to turn around. No big deal. No big deal at all. So this is the house. This is the house, everybody. Now, pay attention to that little concrete fence there on the right. There's a tree behind me. I don't want to hit it. Yeah, you'll notice that in the pictures, that's the concrete fence. That's how I kind of confirmed that this was the exact address. things here on the list. Yeah, so he's like kind of a famous dude hanging out. Uh, his son, John Francis Jr., became the first ever son of a mafia boss to testify against the boss. I, I, I think I mentioned this before, but he died at 103 years old, Sonny Francis. He was let out of jail at 100 years old in 2017. At the time, he was the oldest federal prisoner And also, he was involved in the movie industry. He put up a lot of money for one of the first above-ground pornos called Deep Throat. The movie grossed over $200 million. Um, he bankrolled the movie Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which kind of like 
changed uh, hack 'em up like hack and slash movies. It's like the beginning of those. Uh, which earned him $30 million from, they don't know the exact figures, from an eighty to $140,000 investment, earning $30 million back. That's a pretty crazy uh, return on your investment there. And then, to end off the video, he was quoted before he died saying, only two people could ever hurt you in life, your family and your friends. Yes, I did blow that stop sign. It's a snowstorm. Stop signs are exempt in a snowstorm. Everyone knows that. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. I also have an Instagram, at Mooney Dash Cam, if you want to check that out. I post on there daily. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one.